Hello Space Cadets and welcome to Mueller Planetarium Astronomy at Home. This is Zach Thompson, Planetarium Coordinator at the University of Nebraska State Museum at Morrill Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska, wishing you all clear skies. Today we are going to be exploring some of the wonderful spring constellations that the season has to offer. And to do that, we're going to be using our friend Stellarium. Look to the right of your screen for the web address, stellarium.org, where our star buddies are holding it up. You can download the desktop or computer version for free at home and follow along with us, or use it however you like to get you ready for the evening skies. Let's make things go nice and full screen for us so we get a better view. And we're going to begin here facing to the north just to the north when it gets dark out. So we're going to actually take us to right about 930 or so. That's a good generic kind of time for us. And to really explore the spring skies, it's a good idea to do something called star hopping. And that's where we take a group of stars that we might already know and use it to find other stars or other constellations in the sky. So follow me. Here's the pointer, the mouse up here in the sky, and follow me to find the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper over here to the north. It's upside down and it's made of seven stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if you use your imagination, imagine a big spoon dumping its water out into the sky. So in this kind of season, you can see it high up overhead, but upside down. Now the Big Dipper is actually not a constellation. It is a pattern within a pattern. And this is the official constellation, Ursa Major. So as a bit of trivia for you, the Big Dipper is not a constellation, but it's called an asterism. And again, it's just a picture in a picture. We see the Big Dipper more easily than we do the official constellation, the Big Bear, Greek for the Big Bear. And here's one way to imagine it. Notice that there are other stars besides the Big Dipper, but they are fainter, so you need clear, dark skies in order to see them. But otherwise, even with a little bit of light pollution in or around Lincoln, for example, you should still be able to make out the Big Dipper. But always remember, it's part of the Big Bear. And that's where we're going to start here for our video. We are going to actually start to the north. And when you see the Big Dipper, look here towards the handle. And you see this arcing kind of way that it moves, this arcing tail or this arcing handle of the spoon. As I move our sky here to face us more towards the east, let's follow that arc. It arcs to a bright star called Arcturus. And Arcturus is one of the brightest stars in the spring sky. It's a great orange yellow colored star, which you can really see again with clear dark conditions. You again arc to Arcturus. When you find this star, you'll realize that it's actually part of another constellation. If you use your imagination called Boötes, Boötes the herdsman. Now, if you look at this just straight on it might appear like a boot or a sock so you put it on this way and then Arcturus is the toe but now tilt your heads to the left a little bit and maybe you'll see a kite and there's an invisible cosmic string holding that kite in the sky another way to imagine it though particularly from ancient Greece is this way a herdsman a whole person which does take some imagination in order to see it well enough and if you can see it great but if not that's perfectly fine. Remember to make the stars your own. And if you don't even see this, at least following the Big Bear or the Big Dipper, you should still be able to arc to Arcturus, a very prominent point in the sky. As you see here, as a herdsman or sometimes a farmer, Boötes is, is holding a scythe in his hand. And actually, in some mythologies or other cultures, it was believed that the Big Dipper itself was the scythe or a plow in the sky. So there's a connection there that's one reason why it was thought that they were close to each other in the sky. Arc to Arcturus one more time. Let's hide our constellations there, but they'll be back. Arc to Arcturus and then Spike to this blue star right here called Spica. If you want to get the label to pull up, you need to be zoomed in just a little bit more, such as the case sometimes with stars, or you can see when you click on a star, it pulls up a menu to the left of the screen to tell you a little bit more about it. Spica. It's another spring star, a particularly bright one, not quite as bright as Arcturus, but look at the color, different color. It's more of a bluish star. And again, those colors are very prominent when your eyes are fully adjusted to the dark conditions. Arc to Arcturus and Spike to Spica, 
because this star is the brightest in the constellation of Virgo, the Maiden. It's hard to see, like with Boötes, a person out of all of this, but using our imaginations, maybe we can see what ancient peoples might have imagined one way. And there she is, Virgo. Now, in some mythologies, she was seen to be a goddess, a goddess of fertility or farming. If we look closely, in her hand, where Spica is, the bright star, that's a spike of wheat, or maybe an ear of corn. And here's another stalk in her other hand. As the goddess of agriculture or fertility, it's no coincidence that she would be placed next to a farmer in the sky. Perhaps the farmer needs to give her offerings throughout the year so that he has a good harvest season. But there is a nice connection between agriculture and the stars. And that's, if you find one, you find the rest, there is a connection there, kind of like puzzle pieces forming to show you the whole sky. So again, we arc to Arcturus and spike to Spica. And when you do that, you're dealing with three separate constellations here. On initial glance of the night sky, if you do this, it's a lot easier just to stick with the stars. And then the more you do it, the better you get at it with practice, you'll start to see the rest of the constellations. But we're not done because as we move our sky just a little bit more and still remember what we just did, we use the Big Dipper, we arc to Arcturus, we spike to Spike, and then from here, you will leap to Leo. Leo is very prominent in the southeast southern skies throughout the spring season. First of all, look for a backwards question mark shape. Look for this shape in the sky. It's another asterism, like the Big Dipper. There is no official constellation that's a backwards question mark, but it's the easiest thing to find of Leo. Leo the Lion, the original Lion King. Long before Simba or Aslan, it was Leo. So again, the backwards question mark is the easiest portion to see. It's the lion's head, mane, and chest. The bright star here is Regulus. And then if you follow down, here's the tail, and then either the lion is laying down or pouncing in the sky. This is the traditional way to imagine the pattern of Leo. And if we just isolate them there for you just to kind of really draw your attention more. Other times, I've had guests tell me that it looks like a mouse sometimes. It just all depends on how you're viewing this. But whatever you see, it's important to make the stars meaningful to you. Do they look like something familiar to you? If you connect the dots, and that's all this really is, a cosmic game of collect the dots, what do you see? Do they remind you of someone or something? And if so, draw the constellation. Come up with a story. Why is it special? And share that with others, because that's part of the fun of stargazing. So there you have it. A wonderful grouping of spring skies that will be with us even into the early portions of summer. And how do we find them all again? You start north. Start with what you know. Let's have that be the Big Dipper or the Big Bear, remember. You then arc to Arcturus, which is part of Boötes. You spike to Spica in Virgo, and then you leap up to Leo. And so, you see with Stellarium, this gives you some good prep work. You can get familiar with what is there to show you here and then apply that to the night sky whenever it's clear and dark for you. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the section below. This is Stellarium. You can find it at stellarium.org to the right of your screen. Look forward to seeing you again and remember, keep looking up.